What is going on guys? This is Aussie Van Man. We are back on the road guys. What do you reckon my Christmas wrapping sitting up front here? I uh, probably should have put that away before I hit the road again, but that's my leftover Christmas wrapping. Found it at the dollar store and it's got little koalas like from back home on it, so that's pretty cool. But today, I have no idea where I'm going. I looked up locations yesterday night. I had a bunch of ideas in my head, but I haven't really settled on anything, guys. But I can tell you this, I'm just super excited to be back on the road. I'm in Phoenix currently, heading south. We're on the I-17, heading towards Tucson. Woo, something smells in the air. I don't know what that is. Ooh, stinky. I think it's the factories. Anyway, we're heading south. I really don't know where I'm going to stop along the way, but I think today is going to be one of those days where I just hit the road and see what we see what comes my way, I guess. So uh, anyway, I suppose we'll see at the next stop. I'm just glad to be back on the road, guys. Just puts a smile on my face every time uh, I hit the road on a new adventure. And uh, I don't know why, I'm just super excited today. All right, guys, let's go. All right, guys, so I had a bit of a spot a friend gave to me down near the Colossal Caves here. It's a very, very tiny little uh, dispersed campsite. Um, it's marked on Seeker app. And uh, yeah, apparently it's free and legal to stay here. It's very, very small off the beaten path. But uh, yeah, and it's near Colossal Caves. Apparently it is really close to here. You have to look for it. Um, I seen on the Google Maps though, when I was driving in here, there's a huge clearing right behind me here. So I'm kind of curious to see what's down there. I can see some old ATV tracks going down the back there. So let's take a walk down there and see what's down there. All right, take this weird sketchy trail down the back and see what's down there. Oh, that's weird. There is a big clearing down here. I wonder why people don't park down in here. It looks pretty wet actually. Yeah, this place definitely floods. And there's actually a lot of signs of animal activity up in the back corner here. What the heck? What is this place? It's like a giant, giant water hole, but it's kind of dry, dried up, I guess. <laughs> okay, that's strange. I'm going to explore the area just a little bit more, see what else is around here. Okay, wow. There's this, like, giant wash that comes in through here. And look at the way it's washed out some of the uh, dirt, but not other parts of the dirt. This is kind of crazy, guys. Look at this. Oh. Yeah. And let's see what goes up here. Well, there's a fence here, so I'm not gonna cross that in case it's private property of some sort. Look at all the beautiful soirees up on a hilltop here. Then in the distance, you can see uh, all the snow-capped mountains out here. Very, very cool. It is very chilly out here. We have that like cold mountain breeze coming down here. All right, so it's getting a bit cold outside. I've climbed inside and I'm making a bit of food. I forgot that I didn't even have breakfast today. So um, making an English muffin with bacon, cheese, and hash brown. getting it started the rest is in the air fryer and we're watching a movie too and yeah i got a couple of boxes over there i gotta open i bought i have a new air fryer i've used this one for quite a long time it's developing a little crack in the plastic in the back but uh, it served me well it's like a daily use item it's not been knocked around the back of my van quite a bit so we have a new one over there and then I'm doing a little bit of light reading on the area, see if there's anything else in the area that I want to see tomorrow before I move on further south. All right, 
I'm gonna watch a movie, have a bit of food to eat, do some research, and we'll be back. All right, guys, it's 9.30. My tour starts at 10 o'clock. They ask you to get there 15 minutes early. It's only just up the road, so we're gonna drive up there right now, take a look around, maybe. All righty, so to drive up a little bit of a mountain to get up here, but the view is amazing up here, guys. Let's take a look. Not sure what town that is I see all the way down there. I can see some houses all the way out here in the desert. It's pretty, oh, I think that's the ranch. I think, I believe there's a ranch down here. Yeah. They do horseback riding. Look at all the Suarez all over the place out here. Pretty amazing. Oh, check it out, guys. This is the entrance down into the cave. That's where we'll be going. But first, we got to check in. So we've got a little bit of a map here of the cave. So that would be the entrance up here. As you can see, there's all sorts of tunnels and sinkholes going through here. I'm sure we're only going to go through a pretty straightforward passage of it. There is another tour in here where you can take ladders up and climb through cracks and crevices. But you need gloves, and I didn't bring gloves for that, so we're not going to do that this time. Looks like they have Codamondis here. That's pretty cool. Maybe we'll see some. We are going to stop right away for a couple of minutes to kind of let our eyes adjust to the new surroundings, okay? It is pretty dark in here. A couple minutes will fix that right up here. All right. With that said, to officially kick off today's tour, do you guys like how it smells in here? Yummy. The smell, I will apologize in advance. That was actually me. Okay, I got super sure. nervous. Just enough. Um, you guys might be smelling a bunch of different things in this room. All those things you might be smelling, animal related. Okay, the first thing you guys might be smelling, I do know this because I literally saw them doing it in this room yesterday. White-nosed kawadi poop. Do you guys know what a white-nosed kawadi is? Okay, for those of us that don't, it's a relative of the raccoon. Picture like a big raccoon body and a long striped lemur tail coming out the back of it. That's a white-nosed kawadi. We happen to have 65 to 70 of those amazing animals that occasionally live and poop all over that shelf to your right. Okay, they very well might be in the cave at the moment. We do see them on some of the tours. If I had to bet my own money on it though, I'd say they're probably outside right now doing all their fun kawadi stuff as we speak. That's because they're active during the daytime. Okay, fun kawadi stuff. I can tell some of you are wondering what that might include. They do like breaking into trash cans, stealing food from people, and my adults, I'm legitimately not joking about this third thing. I have seen them break into that prickly pear margarita machine outside twice. <laughs> Since I've been working here, there were literally drunk kawadis stumbling around everywhere afterwards, which I think is super entertaining, personally, kawadis, okay? Um, you guys might also be smelling some of that dark, splotchy stuff up on the ceiling to your left. Do you guys see that? Any guesses? What is it? Bat poop. Okay, so there is some bat poop there. That is, however, mainly bat pee. Ew, bat pee. Fun fact about bats, everybody. Bats can pee while flying above your heads. You guys are in a dry cave today. If you guys feel water hit you in the head, not water. You're getting peed on, right? Yeah. Okay, my recommendation because of that throughout the rest of the tour today, there's going to be pretty stuff up on the ceiling. When you guys look up at it, don't look up like this. <laughs> Straight in the mouth, super gross, bathy. Okay, to your right, there's darker, gooier stuff going on. That is mainly bat poop or bat guano this time. 
The reason I'm telling you guys all that gross stuff right now is because, just to reiterate throughout the rest of the tour, if you touch the walls today, A, damage to the cave, B, pee and poop all over your hands. Ew. Okay, is there anybody in the group, though, that likes baths as much as I do? No. Awesome. You guys will see two different species uh, today, perhaps. Uh, first type, or that you might see flying around our heads at some point, is called the Townsend's Big Eared Bat. Everybody put your hand up real quick. Their body can be about the size of your palm. Their ears can be the length of your fingers on top of their head. So picture your hand flying through the air. That's the Townsend's, okay? Second type is called the Cave Myotis. Put just your thumb up. That's the size of their body. That's it. It's like a flying chicken nugget. Nothing to be scared of, okay? So you guys, we do have bodies. We do get bats. We do get the occasional snake, scorpion, spider, lizard. Everybody's favorite animals can crawl in from time to time as well. However, we root, we were removed venomous animals before any of get you in the morning, so don't worry too much about those. Cool? Cool. Mm -hmm. So guys, those are a few of the animals. One last awesome thing before we continue to the right. I told you about the animals. The first people are also worth mentioning real fast, in my opinion. The first human beings to find Colossal Cave were the Hohokam Native Americans, and they found the cave over a thousand years ago, around the year 900 AD, when that entrance behind you was 30 inches wide. That's it. Okay, so all of us, we just walked in here, they would have had to crawl in here. They use these shelves to your left, that shelf to your right as seasonal shelter and storage. We do know that because they left us thousand year old tools and artifacts scattered around this room, which you guys will see later in the tour. I think that's pretty remarkably cool personally, okay? All right guys, having said all that, your eyes are probably a bit more adjusted. That does mean if you're ready to continue, that's what we'll do, okay? So guys, let's head this way. Watch your head and shoulders as we go. You guys can follow me, okay? Jeez. stop again here for two reasons in particular. First reason being this room is very pretty. Like I said, if you guys want to take pictures, great opportunity. It's one of my favorite spots to do so. Just feel free. Okay. Second reason we're stopped here. We are looking at all of these formations that make caves famous, right? For starters, does anybody know what are the spiky ones up on the ceiling called? Not much confidence in that, but I did hear the right answer. Good job. Yes. So stalactites, right? They do hang tight to the ceiling. When they drip calcite-rich water onto the ground, like these mounds right here, what do they get? Stalagmites, which might trip you if you're not being careful. Okay, tights, mites. These formations that look like melting ice cream, in my opinion, that is called flowstone and dripstone. Flowstone tends to flow over the same rock for a long period of time. Dripstone then drips off that rock. Okay, you guys? This is all made out of something called calcium carbonate or calcite crystal. It's a type of crystal, very pretty, meaning under all this gray dust and pollen and bat poop and bat pee, everything we're looking at would look something like this guy right here in front of us. You guys all see that? Cool. His name is Old Baldy for pretty obvious reasons. He's very bald. He does look this way because he's also super duper incredibly destroyed by humans, sadly. Okay, early explorers of the cave didn't know the whole thing about touching the cave, causing damage to it. They would come up here, rub his head for good luck as they passed by. The oils on their hands did strip him of that gray, dusty, protective coating. And long story short, I'm telling you all, if water ever returns to the cave again from above and drips all the way down to his forehead, it's simply going to brush straight off. He's never going to get any taller than he is right now. Kind of a shame if you ask me. I will be the first to admit, though, it's still a pretty sweet looking forehead. Right, I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda cool, right? So when you guys do come up here, don't touch him, but at least get a good look at old Baldy, say hi as you pass by, all right? Let's keep going this way, guys. Hi, Baldy. You know what? I think I am from 
They wouldn't have had these stairs or these railings or these lights. You guys would be crawling around in the dark for several hours with them on the tour, right? Um, second difference, I'm not going to tell you guys to do this. He definitely would have, right? Again, if you guys all look up, you're going to notice that they look flat on the ends. Before you leave one of his tours to really remember your experience, he's going to encourage you guys, take one of those formations, snap it off the wall, bring it home as a souvenir, okay? That does stunt. Sometimes even kill their growth forever, especially in a dry cave where we don't have water. Those will not regrow, which is pretty sad, especially when you guys consider all of those that you're looking at individually take about a hundred years of peace to grow half an inch. Wow. A half an inch every 100 years. So when they did that, you do have to wonder how much time did they steal from the cave. Pretty sad if you ask me. Okay. Um, so very, very good question. Very depressing answer, but that is the answer. Okay. Um, there's a happy ending to that story. If you want, I'll tell you in the next year coming up. Yeah, okay. I prefer happy. Too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, any other questions, you guys? Okay, then we're going to head this way. Um, everybody, watch your heads here as we go. Okay, this formation right above my forehead is one of the heaviest formations in this entire cave system. That is about 5,000 pounds of rock suspended above me as we speak. Um, his name is Fang because sharp tooth and molar combo going on. Also because if you're five foot seven or taller and you're not paying attention when you come this way in a second, massive chunk right out of the top of your head. I have hit that four times. It hurts really bad. Please be careful as you come this way. Okay? All right, guys, watch your heads there. Watch your heads next set of stairs coming up. Let's go into this next room, right? All right, down we go, guys. More tunnels. Pretty cool, guys. It's way back there. Oh, I'm a bit tight here. Up the stairs. Oh. Okay. Well, this is cool. Nice. Very much liking this cave tour. Um, okay, so as she is going to make her way this way, I'll tell you guys the happy ending to that story real fast. Okay, so Solomon Lake, right, kind of a jerk face. I think we all agreed on that for the most part. Uh, Frank Schmidt, the exact opposite. Did you guys see a plaque dedicated to Frank Schmidt out front of the cave entrance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, super cool dude, right? He goes on one of those earliest tours. He watches people snapping those off the wall right in front of his face. He gets so mad, he buys a cave. He get lost on the tour today. Oh no, it's super dark and it's scary and it smells kind of bad in some spots. I'm guessing all of you would want to get out of here eventually, correct? Yeah. So wherever you're at lost in the cave, walk long enough in any direction and you're probably going to end up right where we're standing at some point. The reason I'm saying that, there's five entrances to this room alone, okay? First entrance, okay, right over here, which we're going to take in about, I don't know, three or four minutes, right? Second entrance, you guys would go in right here. You'd come out right here. It makes a quick loop. Right. Number three, if you guys care, there's a super small, dark, claustrophobic hole there. Don't go that way. Right? Don't choose that one. Uh, number four, that's pretty obvious. We just came that direction. And number five, next to you, Mason, there is a creepy oxygen tank and first aid kit and even a gurney. Whoa, that's super ominous looking. Right? <laughs> so let me ask you guys, which one would you choose to finally get out of the cave if you needed to? Yeah, good job. Right? So, this way is so obvious that it is too obvious. That way is now cheating off limits. You can't go that way. All right. Uh, you guys need to choose a different route. Here's how you guys would do it. We do have a cave witch on one of these walls. If you guys find the cave witch and you ask her for directions, she'll actually point you out of the cave in the right way. If you guys need help finding the cave witch, everybody come up this way next to me. She's on this wall here, okay? Come up nice and close. You're probably wondering what the heck I'm talking about, right? Hmm. Okay, you guys ready? I'm gonna set the scene. Okay, so you're lost in the cave. You make your way to this room. You look over here, right? And you see her long flowing hair first. There's her hair. There's her eye in wart. There is her long nose. I know you guys see that part, right? There is her tooth. There's her mouth, which is open and she's even eating a limestone cookie. 
right? Cave witch. So you guys ask her for directions. You look at her nose, it points us out of the cave in the right way. You could take the creepy first aid kit way the whole way out. Yay, right? Here's the thing about her before we leave though. She's very friendly, obviously. She's also just a little bit lonely, right? If you guys are down here for thousands of years by yourself, I'm guessing you'd want a couple friends with you. So did she. So she used her powers and conjured up Shadow the Cat. Do you guys all see the cat? Right? And then I don't know about you guys, she's also a huge SpongeBob SquarePants fan. Okay? SpongeBob, Patrick. Boom. Right there. That's cool. Look at this big old tunnel. So this room that we're in now is called the Movies and Popcorn Room. It is called that because we've had 23 movies filmed in the cave, the most famous of which was filmed right where you're standing. Okay, 23 movies. On the one hand, lots of documentaries, BBC, National Geographic, stuff like that. Right. On the other hand, like you'd also probably expect tons of really awful, low-budget horror films. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yes, yes, you guys have definitely all seen a movie called Night of the Lepus. No, oh, no. that's always the answer, right? It's the worst movie ever made, okay? It is about giant man-eating killer bunny rabbits. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's terrible. They bought these really cute furry stuffed animal bunnies. They put red paint all over their face to look like blood and then just, like, chucked them across the screen of actors and actresses. That's the whole movie. I can tell you guys want to watch it. Amazon Prime, two ninety nine. dollars Knock yourself out, $3. Yeah, okay? You guys have not heard of that. Have you heard of Sesame Street? <laughs> right. Sesame Goes Western is the one that was filmed right where you're standing, okay? So Big Bird and Cookie Monster, they were down here looking for the lost bird seed and cookie treasure. Super important <laughs> stuff, right? They come down this hallway just like we did. They round the turn going that way. When Big Bird got right where you're all standing, he saw something way scarier than bunny rabbits. He did see our cave T-Rex. Okay, you guys ready? There's his eye, right? 
There's his eyebrow. There's his nose and his mouth. I know you guys are horrified of that. So was Big Bird. He's a giant chicken, right? He got so scared, he runs super fast out of here, and he goes straight through our wall. Oh, you can see his cut out, right? There's his head and his neck and his body, perfect Big Bird shape. I believe he got back here This is a nice long cave tour, guys. I really like this one. Well, we're going to go down this next set of stairs. Everybody, please be extra careful on them. It's called the domino staircase because if the last person in line falls on them, we're all going down with that person like a set of dominoes. Right? What is your name in the very back? Should be able to see all the cave sediment on the ground there. That's cool. Hey, Brock. Yo. Thanks for not falling. Everybody, uh. round of applause for Brock. Oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. MVP. Um, okay, guys. <laughs> you repelled down that hole with him to get started on your tour, and then you set up in this room as base camp for those few hours as he takes you down different tunnels. That's the whole tour, right? Also, that gift shop you guys checked into earlier, that was his old house. He did not have air conditioning. He did have a 71 degree cave though, right out his front door. Because of that, I am not joking. We do have photos of them hoisting couches and chairs and board games and children and friends and family down that hole and setting up in this room for an entire day, day and a half at a time to escape that summer heat outside, which I think is super cool to think about. This right here is literally the original man cave, right? Frank's living room, I think that's pretty sweet. Um, something else before we go this way, uh, from where you're standing to where you're standing, Mason, um, that part of the floor is the only original uh, cave walkway that you'll be on today, okay? So other than that, right, all of this has been placed in here. This right here kind of looks like water frozen in time. It's also a little bit slippery. Um, it's now a calcite formation called cave ice. Something cool about all these calcite formations, just like the types and the mites, is that under a black light, they do glow in the dark. You guys see that? So that's called phosphorescence. Something else that's even cooler about that is that it'll actually hold the glow for a couple seconds. Meaning we can literally draw on the floors, which I think is pretty awesome. Oh, right, that does mean that we can even give Brock a nice little smiley face for not falling on us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Brock, we love you very much. Thank you. It's still uh, I think that's pretty sweet. I'll show you guys another spot coming up where it glows in the dark as well. I just figured I'd show you that now as well. Cool. Um, with that said, guys, we're going to go this way. Five steps down takes you to the lowest point on the entire tour. It's about seven stories under the earth. Do a little lowest point dance when you get there to celebrate. Okay. Keep in mind, though, that does mean we're going to start going up a ton of stairs. Take your time. Watch your step. And then this is just a safety thing. Those five stairs that you can see that we're gonna go up, right after you go up them, you're gonna be met by a formation this big. It's gonna be eye level with all of us. Its name is Bone Crusher. 
because it broke the nose of one of our two regrets. Oh. Watch where you're walking. If you do that, you cannot miss it. It's right in the middle of the path. Okay. at the top of the stairs, okay? Um, probably a little over nine, maybe, maybe 10, if I had to, to get. I'm in charge of mapping out the wild cave tour. Um, that one's like five hours of just crawling around the cave. Check that out, guys. Look at this big old right, box. Huge exit sign. Look to the left-hand side, pointy doghouse looking thing sticking out of the ground. My red Jeep parked kind of next to it so that you cannot miss it. That pointy doghouse thing is the top of that construction shaft. Meaning your guys' vehicles, right above us as we speak. That's the parking lot right there, which I think is pretty crazy to think about. If you guys forgot to lock your car, now's your shot real quick. Okay. <laughs> um, also, we just went up quite a few stairs. As you guys catch your breath, check out the formation to your right. It's one of my favorites. It's called the Silent Waterfall because that would have been a slow flowing waterfall inside the cave at one point. I think that's beautiful to imagine what that must have been like. Check it out. Okay, after you guys get a good look at that, we are going this way behind me. If you're six foot one or taller, watch your head on the next set of stairs coming up, okay? Five foot nine or taller, yeah. <laughs> a lot. That'd be my answer, yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so I had a question. What originally formed the cave? I'll ask you a question. Uh, you guys want nerdy answer or super nerdy answer? Super, super nerdy. Super nerdy. Super nerdy. Um, okay, so has anybody ever been to the Rocky Mountains before? Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, so the event that created those called the Laramie Derogeny. Okay, super nerdy. Basically, two tectonic plates are going like this. One of them slips up. Rocky Mountains. Right? A reverberation of that event comes down this way, slips up in this area, Green Kong Mountains, which you guys are currently inside of. Okay, before it slips up, Arizona used to be covered by an ancient inland ocean. It used to be a sea, now it's a desert. That's weird, right? So it slips up, water from that ocean finds its way in these cracks and eats away to the cave over time. So all this was water. It started to go dry roughly 13,000 years ago. It's the last mini ice age receives out of here during that time, Arizona becomes a desert. Colossal cave starts to go dry. Big question. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, I have a question for you guys. All right. What's down the hole? Hey, you guys, what's down the hole? My phone. Your phone? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Skeletons, maybe. Your phone? It's heaven. She loves the kitchen. She loves rock. It's her thing. So rocks and crystals. Okay, once. 
Oh, that's cool. All right, guys. So that's it for the cave tour. Pretty awesome. I've been wanting to do the colossal caves for a while now, at least a year, I think. I've done one of the two tours in um, Kartshner Caverns, so I still need to do another one of those. And there's other types of tours in this cave that um, are probably a little bit more extensive or exciting, so I need to come back to the colossal caves and we'll do another tour here for sure all right guys let me catch my breath all right guys so we're all ready to get out of here from the cave um i think we're going to call that a wrap for this video but we have plenty more adventures to come in fact today i'll be moving on to some other sites and doing my next video for you guys super excited about that guys some history involved in this one all right guys you know what to do hit that like Hit the subscribe, and until next time, this is Aussie Van Man, and we will see you possibly later if the Coda Mondays don't get me out here. Let me know down below your caving experiences. All right, catch you later. What's going on here?